Hello, this is John Carlo, and in this video I'll be showing you how I make use of Smart's Notebook Software 10, Smart's Document Camera, and the Sentio Student Response System to do a homework review in my mathematics class. So just for some background, uh, the previous night students were working on uh, tables of values and from the tables of values creating scatter plots and from the scatter plots creating lines and curves of best fit. Now the purpose of this homework review is first of all to clarify any misconceptions and secondly I want to check for understanding because today's lesson is heavily dependent on their understanding of the previous night's homework. So this is how I would begin. Students would come in and they would be dialoguing with their peers about the previous night's homework and what I would do is I would roam the room and I would pick out some student work. So in this case, this could have been actually a question that a student had, or it could have been something that I noticed that, that I might need it to clear up. So I'd put it under my document camera, and I would autofocus, uh, and I'll take a picture of this particular student's work. I'll also, and what I, I usually do is, is not just use one example, but I'll try to find another student's work uh, and, and take a sample of that as well. So you'll notice to get the document camera on the top, I click the little icon that looks like the document camera, and I grab my other student's work, put underneath the document camera, you can autofocus and zoom, and I'm just going to capture that image as well. And what I'll do here is I'll make use of the dual page display. So you'll notice there's two pages of student work. And I'm going to use dual page display. And I'll just get the, the right two pages to showcase both students' work. Now, what I might want to do is, is I noticed here that the table values are the same. So perhaps what, I'm going to, what I'd want to do is I'm going to take a picture of just the scatter plot because there seems to be a uh, misconception uh, with the scatter plot. So I'm just going to capture, we'll call this student, student A. We're going to capture his scatter plot. And let's just make it bigger here. And I'll take a look at student B and I'll capture his scatter plot. And I'll get rid of what's not needed and just make it bigger. So now I have both student scatter plots for the same question. Uh, and I'll enter into a dialogue. What I might do uh, is have a student come up to the board uh, tell me any similarities or differences. Uh, I could get them to use the highlighter and so some students might notice this particular student forgot to label. Um, this particular student forgot to put arrows on both ends. So I, I'm making uh, students aware of any potential communication issues uh, in this case with the arrows or with the labeling. But then I get into more details in terms of the differences between these two scatter plots and as you can see they're this particular student versus this student, they have their uh, axes flipped. And so I'll bring these two up and the whole point is to have the students enter into a dialogue to discuss similarities and differences. Um, and what's nice is that the students get to see their own work being displayed on the board uh, and it provides for a very rich learning experience. What I have prepared next is some questions that were actually taken from the previous night's homework and I just want to check for student understanding. So you notice in these three slides I'm checking to see if students understand uh, when to use each of the different lines, curve, or, or a no uh, model of best fit uh, to check for student understanding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Sentio and students would already have the receivers in their hands. I'm going to start the assessment. Once I've completed the assessments, what I'd like to do is actually take a look at my students' results. So clearly I can tell that students understand that a linear relationship would be, or a linear line of best fit would be the best for this scenario. Only a handful of students got it wrong. And move on to the next question. And now I can see that all students understood uh, that this should be a linear model. And I move on to the third question. Let's take a look. Yep, majority of students understand that this should be a curve of best fit. And same thing for this last question, that a curve of best fit is the best model. So once I have uh, 
checked for understanding for this particular concept, I kind of move on into more specifics. And what I want to see here is if students understand the concept of drawing line of best fit. So what I'll actually do is I'll, I'll go back to my student work. So I'm just going to scroll up here and get my student work and maybe I'll remove all the annotations that I made. And I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it and resize it because I want a student from the class to come up and draw what they would think would be the line of best fit. So I would use my shape recognition tool and I'll change the color to red. And a student will come up on the board and draw what they think is the line of best fit. And I'll ask them if they want to make any changes. Now usually here you get some rumblings from the class you know, if a student does this, there might be some students that need to complain. And I wouldn't actually open the floor to the, the class yet, because what I'd like to do is I'll take a copy of this. And on the next slide, I'm actually going to have set up, I'm going to paste it. There we go. I'm going to have set up, sent you a question. And what I want to probe the class, and I'm going to start the assessment, I want to probe the class to see if they understand uh, whether or not this is the correct line of best fit. Once I stop the assessment, I want to take a look to see my students understand it. It seems like majority of the students uh, got it right, but there's a good number of students that uh, got it wrong. So what I'm going to do is I've already preset another question, and I'm going to uh, start this question. Uh, to check to see if students uh, are having difficulty with this concept. And I can tell that everybody's finished answering, so I'm going to stop this question. Uh, and I noticed that uh, there definitely is uh, a misconception about how to determine the line of best fit. And so what I'm going to do at this point, because it's important uh, for students to understand last, uh, last night's homework in order to complete today's work, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back and review uh, the notes with my students. So in my gallery, I make use of my content, and this is a grade 9 class. And uh, the material that I think I need to review comes from the data management section. And what I, I'm in the habit of doing is just taking a picture of the key notes. And here would be a key note uh, in terms of how to determine the uh, line of best fit. So I'll, I'll kind of go over that with my students. And uh, if I need to, I'll use make use of you know, an interactive applet, this particular one I found from a website, uh, to review the concept of uh, drawing a line of best fit. And I'll have students uh, generate some different graphs, have students come up and use the shape recognition tool to draw where they think is a line of best fit and test their actual uh, predictions with the actual uh, regression line and go over this concept again because it seems like there's a misunderstanding uh, of that concept. So as you can see in this video tutorial, uh, I've used notebook software, the document camera, the Sentio student response system to clarify any misconceptions that uh, might have occurred in last night's homework based on the previous day's work and also to check for understanding as it uh, is important uh, for today's lesson.